Well, hey guys, all illuminated here at Whole Foods. This particular Whole Foods is super well stocked. Um, they have this brand, Karuna. Fun fact, like I wanna say seven or eight years ago, I tried a Karuna face mask and I really liked it and bought several of them, did them multiple times and then completely forgot about it. But they have this Illuminate face oil. Now, facial oils, they don't really reduce water loss particularly well, but they can smooth the skin down, make everything more glowy and radiant. This particular one has willow bark extract, which is anti-inflammatory. Willow bark extract, though, it's not the same thing as salicylic acid. Mandelic acid, however, is an alpha hydroxy acid. It very gently exfoliates, but it also improves moisture content. It can be helpful for hyperpigmentation. This does actually have salicylic acid in it though, as a side note, which is good for pores and hyperpigmentation. Now this has thyme flower leaf oil in it, which may be irritating. It also may be anti-inflammatory. And if you're allergic to fragrance, it might cross react with your allergy. This also has niacinamide in it too, which is good for hyperpigmentation, redness, the health of the skin barrier, and it has an anti-aging effect. It's an antioxidant, it's anti-inflammatory, and it's beneficial for acne. So this particular product would be a good option. It's kind of blown out. If you are someone who has acne-prone skin that heals with hyperpigmentation or redness, that might be something you might want to try. However, it's $27.49 for one ounce. CeraVe makes a um, salicylic acid, alpha hydroxy acid product for acne prone skin that would be a, an alternative that is less expensive, but that always looks promising. Then they have an all day cream here with sandalwood extract. Now that is definitely fragrance. If you're allergic to fragrance, you would have to avoid it. It's an essential oil. It may have some anti-inflammatory properties to it. This has squalane in it, which is an emollient. I happen to love moisturizers with squalane. I just find that they're, they give the skin a nice like radiant glow. It also has rose flower water. Now rose flower water is really trendy. Rose, like rose water, like rose toner. It's mostly just fragrance. It may have anti-inflammatory properties depending on the time of the year it's harvested and all of these factors that we'll never know, um, but it's not, like the hype around it, there's not like good research to substantiate it. So I don't know. This particular one looks mostly like a scented facial moisturizer, $18.99. Now they have this multitasking face oil. Turmeric is anti-inflammatory and it has compounds curcuminoids that are, well, anti-inflammatory. However, penetration into the skin is difficult with turmeric. But they also have added some uh, essential oils and fragrance. Linaloo, limonene. So if you're allergic to fragrance, you have to watch out for that. Fragrance is just the most common allergen in skincare products. If you're not allergic, you don't necessarily have to go out of your way to avoid it. But it can frequently be irritating for people too, so just something to be aware of. Now, this is interesting. They have a balancing cleanser with red clover and snow mushroom. Snow mushroom is a really nice source of hydrating ingredient. It, it, it's it's uh, hydrating, rich in humectants, <laughs> help Im to improve the moisture content in the top layer of the skin, the stratum corneum. And when the moisture content is teed up, then the skin turnover processes occur at a more reasonable pace. And it makes for, it makes the need to exfoliate yourself less necessary because your skin naturally exfoliates and when the water content is teed up that is that's good this has um, additional humectants it has sodium hyaluronate this also has niacinamide this one is scented as well so if you're allergic to fragrance beware now also here at whole foods i didn't realize this but this sunscreen is one of my favorites highly recommended they sell it at target it is pricey at 28 dollars 99 check out my review of it um it's really good um 1.7 ounces 28 dollars 99 um the tint on it is kind of similar to it's it's it, it's a good option for people who have a skin tone like me or maybe a tone or two deeper 
but if you have a really deep skin tone, it you know, likely is going to leave a cast. It's a nice fluid consistency and it really gives the, the skin a, a nice healthy radiant glow. It's a zinc oxide sunscreen, that's the active ingredient. And it also has, um, I'm forgetting what other ingredients, and I think the other ingredients are like inside the box, but I, I know for a fact it's free of fragrance. Looks like they came out with a gel cream. I haven't tried this with shiitake. Shiitake is gonna be hydrating. Mushroom is like, mushroom extracts are very moisturizing and probably have anti-inflammatory compounds. Ceramides are lipids in the skin barrier, so they help with barrier function so that irritating things stay out and moisture stays in. And this also has peptides, which are hydrating. But I don't know what else is in it because they put the ingredient oh here we go jojoba seed oil is an emollient shea butter is nice for reducing water loss i would like to try this at some point what's this evan healy brand comment below and if you have ever heard of this brand before um they have a wild carrot nourishing eye balm Ooh, 31 dollars 99 when it comes to nourishing and moisturizing the skin around your eyes you don't need a separate eye balm, but a lot of people enjoy them. Now, when it comes to active ingredients like retinol or um, hydroxy acid, you, you may want to use a dedicated eye product because eyelid skin is so delicate. This has sunflower seed oil, which is nice for smoothing things down. Beeswax may help reduce some water loss. Olive oil is an emollient, as is avocado oil, shea butter. Rose hip seed oil is anti-inflammatory. Now people like to allege that rose hip seed oil is like a natural source of retinol. It, it maybe has like 0.0003% retinol in it, depending on, again, the harvesting conditions and all of these things. So it is such a stretch to say that. But anyway, it, it, rose hip oil may have anti-inflammatory compounds as well. So it's like not completely um, useless, but don't assume it's gonna be like a nice retinol alternative for your eyelids. That's kind of a um, a little bit of a stretch. I saw this out of the corner of my eye and I thought it said chicken wild rose hip. I was like, okay, haven't seen chicken skincare yet, um, but it said Chilean. Uh, what does this have? Sweat glands and sebaceous glands work together to produce a thin coating of lipids, oil, and perspiration. So the sweat glands and the sebaceous oil gland, um, they are, the sebaceous oil gland links up with your follicle, with your pore. And sebum is what largely makes your skin feel oily. And if you have acne prone skin, it contributes, it's, it's part of acne. Um, but sweat is not linked up to the hair follicle. It's not linked up to the pore. The sweat gland is its own separate thing. You have a lot of sweat glands on the palms of your hands, the soles of your feet. You have no hair follicles on the palms and soles. So they're separate. Um, but sweat, the purpose of sweat is to cool the body. Um, it's mostly water and um, some sodium and other trace compounds. Um, but uh, a lot of people like to allege that sweat is like detoxifying. It's, it's really not. It, it's meant to cool your body. Your liver detoxifies. Sweat cools the body through evaporative water loss. Anyway, <laughs> skin anatomy aside, what does this have in it? Oh, it's just rosehip seed oil. Is that it? All right. <laughs> and I already kind of talked about rosehip seed oil. Maybe anti-inflammatory, but don't hang your hat on that being an alternative to retinol. $28.49, that's expensive. Argon Intensive Facial Serums. Is this argon oil? Argon oil, oh no, this is argon oil plus a bunch of essential oils, which can be irritating to the skin, so I would skip that. Argon oil, though, by itself is um, a nice emollient for the skin. It helps give a glowy appearance, it can smooth down dry, peely skin and it is also a source of like antioxidants and things. So it has some anti-inflammatory effects. It's all, argan oil is also really good for the hair, like putting it on the ends, if you have dry, brittle ends to your hair is beneficial. What's this company, Oxalis Apothecary? Now, these clay masks, um, geranium is fragrance, so you'd have to avoid that if you are allergic to fragrance, but clay helps absorb oil sebum from the skin surface and from within the pore. So doing a clay mask can be helpful if you or somebody has 
oily acne prone skin just to remove some of that excess oil like a lot of people who have oily skin when they wake up in the morning they find that their face is shiny um, doing a clay mask can help remove some of that excess sebum will allow for your skincare products to penetrate better and for your makeup to go on better. Facial mists um, are not you know, necessary, if you will, and just spraying scented water on your face. And it's more of a, a pleasantry rather than a benefit to your skin. If anything, uh, it increases evaporative water loss, which can end up drying out your skin to a certain you know, extent and being irritating. Jasmine, Absolute, and Rad... This sounds like it would be a, a good um, like palate cleanser <laughs> after a heavy meal. I don't know. What's in the facial cleanser? Now, this is clay and pineapple enzymes. Um, grapefruit, castor oil. Man, how did they concoct this? Because I I'm not a cosmetic chemist, but this seems like something that would be difficult to mix up all of this. Castor oil is so viscous. $28.99. The pineapple fruit extract may be irritating, FYI. Same with the grapefruit essential oils. Looks like Whole Foods has a micellar water. I don't personally use micellar water um, to like remove my makeup and sunscreen, but a lot of people like them. Hard to predict how good they are just by looking at the ingredients. This one is scented with things like cucumber and grapefruit, so I don't know about that. But Whole Foods Gentle Skin Cleanser and Daily Facial Cleanser and Moisturizing Lotion look like uh, Whole Foods versions of Cetaphil. Um, the ingredient list looks similar as well. The Gentle Skin Cleanser it's probably going to be creamy, a good option for very dry, sensitive skin. The Daily Facial Cleanser, this one is going to likely be a little bit better at removing uh, excess oiliness from the skin. It has niacinamide, which is anti-inflammatory, and panthenol. This looks like, this looks like definitely the Cetaphil Daily Facial Cleanser, or the new formula. Uh, and by new, I mean like a year ago, Cetaphil changed up their cleanser formulations. The moisturizing lotion, I'm actually currently using the Cetaphil moisturizing lotion off and on to my face and body. Um, it has avocado oil and sunflower seed oil, panthenol, which is really good for um, moisturizing, and then niacinamide is beneficial for the skin bearer. This is a good option, as are many body moisturizers, um, if you're someone who has some hyperpigmentation on the body, because the niacinamide can be helpful for that. And likewise, this is a good body moisturizer if you get acne breakouts on the body because the niacinamide can be helpful for the acne and a lot of people who have acne are prone to acne breakouts on the body they tend to shy away from moisturizers but that ends up um, making your skin more prone to irritation and uh, subsequently can aggravate the acne. Oh I didn't realize this was vegan so no animal ingredients in this. $4.99 that is a good good value. I don't know what the going rate is. is that Am I reading that right? That's a good price for that. Now, a couple of years ago, I reviewed the Aztec Secret Indian Healing Clay Mask, so you may want to go back and review that if you are interested in this. Um, it's kind of a mess to do, to, to be honest. Um, a lot of people love this and do it. More power to you, but I just, I'm lazy and I would rather have a mask already made up for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, looks like the Soap Girl Calcium Bentonite Clay is another one you could do yourself. Ray, Vegan Collagen Boost. Okay, so collagen is going to be either um, marine-derived or bovine. And there are, yeah, there are some, some studies, albeit they're, they're mostly sponsored by by the makers of these collagen supplements. There are some studies that show that either marine or bovine collagen, hydrolyzed collagen sup Yeah, so what I was saying, um, the studies on collagen, they're mostly sponsored by the, the people who make these things, but they do actually show an improvement in 
uh, skin moisture and a smoothing out of like fine lines. But whether or not, you know, you could achieve that through some other means just by, I don't know, were they drinking more water? Who knows? Um, who knows? They don't appear to be harmful other than digestive upset. And of course, if you have allergy to them, then you would want to avoid. Now, I don't consume them because um, they're not vegan and, and B, you know, I'm just not interested in the, that. Um, but here we have vegan collagen boost. So I think that these kind of things are a bit, what is the actual ingredient in this? So I should figure out. This is basically a vitamin C supplement with some prebiotics, inulin, and Jerusalem artichoke. Those can be helpful for feeding the good bacteria in your stomach. You know, ultimately, in theory, that, that may have a benefit for your skin, depending on if this is even bioavailable, you know what I mean? But I think it's a bit misleading to say vegan collagen boost. I mean, yeah, vitamin C is important for for making collagen in the skin, but um, believe it or not, dietary vitamin C, like just taking a bunch of vitamin C, it doesn't end up increasing vitamin C levels in the skin by much. Most of it just gets passed out through the kidneys. Um, so you're kind of just making expensive urine. So I don't know. But it would be, in, comment below um, what you would think of a, like I have no interest in these collagen supplements. Taking them, I, you know, I'm suspicious that they are really not doing much. But those of you out there who take collagen supplements, wh like why have they not come up with a lab made marine collagen? Um, because presumably they can make this co these hydrolyzed collagen peptides in a bacterial model. And one would think that they could even do it and make it safe for people who are allergic to like shellfish and things. It would be an animal free animal collagen, similar to like they now have animal free whey protein. So it would essentially be ve it would be vegan because it'd be made in a bacterial um, in a lab in a bacteria. Would you take a collagen supplement made that way? Blue Bonnet Age Less Skin Formula. I have a video on alpha lipoic acid and I have a video on DMAE. So check those out. I have a, like if there's a dietary supplement with some sort of skin or hair claim, chances are I have a video on it. Just type in my name, Dr. Dre and, and whatever it is. But I know I have a video on alpha lipoic acid and DMAE and suffice it to say the research is not there. These ice rollers are really all over social media. Um, and they're kind of beneficial for temporarily decreasing puffiness, like in the face. And they're also, I think they're helpful if you have a lot of itch, <laughs> like facial itching, because the cool sensation of these can distract little itch signals. Um, do you necessarily need something like this? No, you could just use a cool compress. But the rolling action does kind of help with depuffing. But you can get these on Amazon for much less. Check it out, 365 has a Bacuchiol body oil blend. $15.99 for this. $15.99, also with rosehip oil. Now Bacuchiol, it's an antioxidant. It's another one of those ingredients that um, they like to claim is um, an alternative to retinol. They're basing that off of a lab-based study. Bacuchiol has been shown to improve the appearance of, of wrinkles in a small study, but it's too premature to say that it acts like retinol, so that claim always kind of annoys me. Argon oil is good for softening and smoothing out the skin surface. Likewise, avocado oil is, macadamia seed oil. This is going to give you a glowy look to the skin. This will give you that kind of glow, but it does have fragrance, which again, if you're allergic, avoid. Man, people are really making their entire personality out of this rosemary oil thing. Listen, rosemary oil, in terms of hair growth, it has been shown in a study to be comparable to 2% minoxidil for androgenetic alopecia. But here's the thing. Um, 2% minoxidil is like much weaker strength and is usually not even a very effective, especially in men. In women, it can work, but the 5% minoxidil is better. Like if they had compared it to 5%, I would be more intrigued. But 2% is like, okay. I mean, so there is that study. I can't completely poo-poo it, but more research is needed. But man, people are acting like rosemary oil is just suddenly gonna turn you into a Rapunzel. Don't fall for it. Um, I mean, you can try it, do what you want, but um, don't, don't, don't get your hopes up too much. People on social media, again, they, they over, 
overstretch it with what rosemary oil can accomplish. And bear in mind, a lot of hair loss conditions and, and conditions that lead to thinning of the hair, hair shedding, a, a large handful of them spontaneously resolve on their own doing nothing. So bear that in mind, um, especially like if they're talking about postpartum hair loss. Yeah, that's that's very distressing to go through. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's very distressing. But e eventually, you know, when you're no longer postpartum, um, it, you know, it, it slows down and, and goes back to your normal growth rate and, and things improve. It, it's a slow process. But as you're going through that, it's distressing and you're a prime target for misleading marketing so um, there you go this Soraya Brazil um, these henna creams they're really good um, as a side note but they make a hair mask that's really good it's like um, shockingly good I was but no they don't have it here What's this two-in-one anti-dandruff shampoo and conditioner by 365 honey crisp apple it's a salicylic acid shampoo. So this would be good um, if you have a lot of scalp buildup. It, salicylic acid on the scalp can help exfoliate. Um, loves the sebaceous rich environment up there. Uh, salicylic acid not only is good for dandruff, but it's also good if you have uh, scalp psoriasis. You want to lather this to your scalp. Let it sit on there for a few minutes uh, before rinsing it off. Think of it as a scalp mask. Um, and then follow up. I mean, they claim that this is a conditioner, but I would still follow up with a conditioner at least to the ends of your hair uh, because anti-dandruff shampoos, they can be drying. Even if uh, this one though, it's got what? Gluconolac tone that's hydrating um, sweet almond oil jojoba seed oil those are nice and moisturizing for the hair strands but I'd be interested to try that eight dollars and 29 cents well this Whole Foods was well stocked lots of good skincare talking points I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the end slate I'm going to put my recent Target shop with me video lots of good skincare and Target so you don't want to miss that one it'll be up next but if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe I'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye